dress for success, and you want to make sure that you have the correct group for your team to travel, because as your team travels and they reach and achieve their goals and achieve their success, that makes you successful also. So you have to choose to live your dreams. I'll be fair with you. Before Hammond, I had lost my ability to dream. This company now has given me the ability to dream again. I had a coach once before who said, you're going to dream. Don't dream the little fiddly get by dreams. Dream the big dreams. All right? So if you like the fish out there in the boat, don't be out there in a dinghy. Get yourself the USS Enterprise. Okay? <laughs> Make sure it doesn't cost any more to dream big like that. So dream the big dreams. You can. This is the right vehicle, the right place, the right time. So come on, let's all dream and achieve our goals. It's my privilege now to, uh, to introduce our next presenter. And ever since I came into the business, there's certain people that you can identify as, as leaders, natural leaders. And I have watched um, this young lady, as a matter of fact, her entire family uh, work this business as a team. They're building it throughout Maryland. They're building it throughout the nation. She is a programmer with um, Northrop Grumman, I believe. And she, like I said, she's just continuing to build an awesome team. So it gives me pleasure to introduce to you senior consultant, Terry Bliss. And so right now I'm going to adapt a little bit. I really appreciate that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Eric. And thank you, you do a great job. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't listen to him before we came. Because he would have been saying, deliver. Anyway, but right now, before I start on the tools, I'd like to introduce um, a couple who is achieving success incredibly quickly in this company. Um, they're going to come up and give you a little testimony. And, and a testimonial and let you know how they are actually doing this and why it's working for them. I I see their name on a lot of the Ruby activities right now. I know that they are listening. Um, apparently they're incredibly coachable and teachable. So please help me welcome Jason Subin. Jumpstart one. I think, wow, 
they have a system where you can earn money right away and put it into this pocket. Because all the other network marketing companies, they say, okay, we have this great plan, but put a thousand dollars to get in, and then. <laughs> so that's when we went home and we said, okay, let's, let's think about this. Um, what about it for about three seconds? <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to answer three questions for you. And we will. And the first question is, uh, why was Amazon the right choice? And the answer was obvious, it's not a product, it's a service. And that was really appealing to us because products uh, had to be sold, pushed, encouraged, whatever it was. But for this service, which everybody used, in a bad economy, I can conscientiously go to people and say, save money. I can't go to any other item or product and say, buy more of these. This is better for you. And you can save more money. Uh, no, you, you know, if you buy is safe, or if you have to save money by buying more, then that's not really safe. Even though why I always justify that. <laughs> <laughs> but this is literally, you can save money without buying any more. And so that was the, the biggest, uh, especially in the economy that we're living in right now. So that was about the right choice. Uh, the second question that we have to ask is, how has Ambit made a difference in your life? Well, it's already made a difference in our lives because we made up all of our money back in a matter of two months. Now we're getting our energy for free, which means we're good for the rest of our lives. <laughs> 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 got to our region, which which encouraged us even more, but uh, it, it actually made a difference in terms of giving us the opportunity to dream again, just like Eric shared. Uh, the possibility is now again there, because with the other ones, we said we could work and we made money on, on some of them, the ones that we work on. But <clears throat> In a down economy, when situations change, those things change too. But this company grew 20,000% during the height of the recession. <laughs> yes, yes. So what company does that? <laughs> so I said, grab it. That's right. Yeah. Like, grab it. So that's why we did that. Um, the other thing that it uh, helped us do is it, it made us people people again. We wanted to keep, I mean, I'm a people person anyway, but if we just get stuck in a job and, and just get narrow minded uh, and don't interact with people, then we lose that value. The value of interaction, value of, of interacting with people. Now we get to talk with our friends, say, how are we doing to do this business? Right? So let's get together. We had a double date with one of our downlines a couple weekends ago. And we would never had that <laughs> had we not maintained and then even developed that relationship. So that was that was a, a added value in this uh, business. So we're really grateful for that. And then it challenged uh, challenged us in our leadership. Uh, so that we again have to be stressed and grow and grow as individuals in order to build a business and in order to increase our, our confidence. Third question that we have to answer is, what is one uh, piece of advice you would give a new consultant? I have tons of them. <laughs> I had to narrow it down and said, I'm not going to just give them one, uh, maybe two or three. So here's the very, very first one is, don't be a dragster, but a locomotive. Dragster is like four point seconds of acceleration glory. <laughs> throw out the, throw out the parachute and you're done. <laughs> So if you're in this business being a dragster, you're done. Yeah, give it all I got. That's it. It's not going to work for you. A locomotive goes like this.
Put on the brakes. I can't. <laughs> I gotta go to the and realize no work is not working for me. Stop. It's not working for me. You can't do it. Once you start that thing, man, you get to start. Just like, keep going and going and going. So don't be a dragster, be a locomotive. Uh, I would like to, well, among other things. Um, this encouragement of other things, but I'll skip that just for an illustration. If you understand um, vision and, and faith, Lindsay Vaughn is a speed skater. She's the girlfriend of Tiger Woods. And her story is amazing. When she was eight years old, she started skating. She said she wanted to have the most gold medals that any woman had. And she worked really, really hard for it. Down the line, she got injured, she came back. <clears throat> this is what her mother said. She said she, she was so convinced that she was going to be an Olympic champion that she used to practice her autograph. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. Do we practice our autograph because we know that we're going to be a champion? That you get started in this business and go, I'm going to be financially successful, so I'm going to start dreaming about where I'm going to go. This is the way it's going to be. Right? There's, a, there's, a, there's a principle if you pray for rain, they'll take an umbrella. Because if you don't take an umbrella, you don't believe that the prayer is going to be answered. If you can't live what you believe, then you can't. <laughs> Terry is an awesome, awesome, super intelligent program manager in North and Grove. And because we're in the same field, I know she has to know to do that job, so she's brilliant. <laughs> but she's also brilliant because you know what? She saw the vision with this, with this business. And she sees it, and she took the bull by the horn, and she is so close to executive myself. And I can't wait until her and Eric and Olivia and everybody in this room is on that stage and can walk across the, the stage with us as new executive myself. So let me reintroduce and bring her back up, Terry List. <laughs> Okay, so, like you said, the second time my name is still Terry West. <laughs> and that is really brilliant. I haven't had that one yet. I really have a lot to live up to and a lot to follow. That was wonderful. It was really inspirational. So, um, my job today, and it's here. Well, I'm afraid to go forward. I'm afraid to go forward. So, okay. See, there's some, that's a surprise for you in here. Okay, so it's my privilege to be able to talk about the tools that this incredible company has given to us. Now we see this, it's over a billion dollars in revenue, they did it done in seven years. So apparently they know what the tools are they need to do. These people know what they're talking about. And they're, all the tools are there for us. And as you go on into this company and you build your business, you will learn them. So um, and before I go on, I, I want to tell you my why. I feel that between two introductions, you know exactly who I am and what I am. But I will tell you my why, and you've heard a little bit about that. One fourth of it is sitting at this table. That's not. Woo! I'm not <laughs> and I do want to thank him for getting a 
like really early, still at that age where, you know, six o'clock or seven o'clock is just not part of the day. <laughs> so, um, my husband and my other son, Danny, are very active in this company. Saturdays are not always a good day for them. But um, I'm going to talk a lot about Tim later on, so you'll see just how into this company and into Billion's business they are. But my why is because I really like them. Don't, don't let you, I do like them. I love them, of course. You know, I had a lot of input into getting them here. <laughs> I like hanging out with them. He actually is a lot of fun. I travel with him a lot. We have a lot of the same interests. Um, and my other son, Danny, and and Tim, we we laugh a lot. It is a, a laughing house. So you're all welcome to come laugh with us whenever you want to have a little bit more training. But that's my why. I want to spend some more time with them. So. Whether they like it or not. <laughs> anyway, so before we go on, I just want to let you know we're going to learn about the tools and the right tools. There are all kinds of tools, but you want to make sure you have the right ones at the right time. So just enjoy this really short clip first, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> Very comfortable. He didn't want the flower bag that I gave him. <laughs> that was just not him. <laughs> now we're going to go through this a little. Probably knew I'd a little. Alright, so, thank you. He's like a rock star. Okay. So, I went through this last night. I said, Tim, how does your toolbox look? And he said, we'll take a look. Now, I will tell you that in this goes right into what Eric is talking about. And this is like how to understand your how to use the tools and the tools to make your business grow, how to speed it up with the correct tools, and why you should always have all of them with you, even though you might need, not need all of them. So when Eric was talking about not sending out the website, just to send it out, you know, oh, I'm going to send out some emails with my website, he waits until he gets a time, he calls them up. And he lets them open it up. And in the beginning, maybe we weren't so coachable and trainable, or maybe it was just a little different. But we were sending it out, and boy, Tim was getting really frustrated. It's like, you feel like you're chasing people. Has anybody come across that? It's like, oh, have you looked at this? Have you looked at it? Oh, oh I haven't had time. I haven't had time. And now your email went all the way down. 200 emails down, and they're like, I don't know where it is. 
So that's a really good way to do it. There's another way to do it too. I do it your way. I get on the phone, I hear them over the night for myself on you, and I just listen to them so they, they're not fooling me. But Tim went out and he adjusted an affordable DVD player. So here it is. He has the DVDs in here. And he always has an extra one just in case this one isn't working. So there's one for him. He has this, and sometimes he shows it two or three times a day. Always has his charger. Right? And that's really because I took this one day and didn't take the charger. Not mistaken. <laughs> so, anyways, Tim has he's taken his truck to get work done at CarMax before. He took this with him, and the guy that sold him the truck, he sat in there and showed this to him while his car, the truck was being worked on. He said, Let me just show you something. And he made him watch the TV that he didn't make. He brought it up, and he's just sitting there. He's also talked to people. And that's the do they have time? He said, well, I really don't. I've got to get home, but maybe right after. He said, OK, I'll meet you here. And all it did was cost them a beer. They went in. They sat down. You can do this. I can't have a beer at my real job, because they want alcohol on the premises. But this is a fun business. You're supposed to have fun while you're doing this. Yeah. Not that you have to have alcohol to have fun. Don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> you look at me and put guns, knives, and beer. <laughs>
he goes out, he also has them. I didn't even know he did this. Our magazines, which we'll get into later, the new magazine has an incredibly nice, really good uh, art reaching for excellence. It's in the newer, the, the brand new ones that are out there. He has his business card attached to a copy. He has, he has a lot of copies of this in here. When people have, this article alone will get somebody to a whole meeting. I am not kidding you. If they look at the DVD and they're a little hesitant, hand them this art. This is nothing. He made copies, he put his card on it, he handed them, take a look at this, or they want to show their wife or their husband or whoever. Because this article is amazing. I read this on the back of my ambition and I was so happy that was in there. So this is filled with them. He also, in this, and I'm not going through the real shows yet, we'll get there. These are the ones that you learn as you go. These are he has one thing you really want to carry with you, especially if you have free energy, a copy of your bill. This is the second page. If you have a bill that is a, a, a zero, we have a zero on ours, you want to keep that. If you don't have that yet, that's fine. But what's really nice about having that is that shows your new customer and your consultant. There are no changes but for one great change. Here's what it was, here's what it is. One line. And that's how you can prove it to them. So I have our very last one and our very first one that shows that before I had free energy, that's what I showed, just that my rate was that lower and that was the only change. And then, like I said, your personality issues being tool are a huge tool for you. But as you grow in this company, you become a talent scout. And I stole that from the two of them. But it truly really is true. And when you're talking to people, you will find out the kind of person they are. They might need facts. They might need, maybe they're emotional. There are articles. There's a Donald Trump article that Gal, I don't know, videos you can get YouTube or any copy the article. There's the J.D. Power. There's there's a lot of them. Tim has copies of all of them. That person is a factual person. That's what he has. He brings out the article from the Inc. 500. Now, we do have the actual magazine. But I, we don't do that now. We only have two copies. I've not gotten down to Brian McClure, so we show that. We can have the actual, he has printed out the whole article with Jerry in there, whatever. This is an actual fact. In 500 is not made up. You know, hand them this. Those are for your factual people. The emotional ones you can see, Donald Trump's like, this is the best company ever. You know, just say, read what your people need. Don't give them everything. No one is everything. Do not hand them. A hundred articles to say, well, this is what you need. Just feel them out because you don't want to overwhelm them, but you do want to answer their questions. Okay. So okay, so on top of on top of that, now I'm going to just go over what Ambit has given us. Like I said, a billion dollars in revenue, these people know what they're doing. These are tools that they have given us. Except the customer consulting forms, you saw them. Um, the DVD and the flip chart, the computer, the gum, and all that, that was in the bag. The Success in Home magazine, we'll go into that a little bit more in a second. Right there. Brochures and flyers, you can get them right off of your website. Um, John Maxwell, Walls of Leadership, and also a lot of other books. And they're actually in my book. I have uh, the GoPro, the Airport, um, I mean, the GoPro by Airport, and then the GoPro No. Um, but I have that, I love that book. Um, this one, I also have speak Thompson, but I, anything that will help me learn, I have in there. So these are the ones that are provided by Ambit. Okay? So you can use them, and then you can figure out which ones work best for you. Now, the Succession Home Magazine, I don't care what anybody says, this is one of the best tools that you'll ever see. This takes you cover to cover about success stories with Ambit. These people are real. A lot of you have met a lot of the people in the books. That's a great, that's a great line being able to tell somebody, I know this person, I've met this person, this person helps me, I have this person's phone number, I am calling right now, things like that. So you want people to have this magazine, but remember, these magazines, you're paying for them, they're part of your business. So you want them to see them, if they're, especially if they're really interested there, that's it, it's $5, and in a week later you're going to have $100, so what is that? that's quite a return on your money. Okay, but if there are people who just want to see, let them know. I'd love you to look at this. I have a lot of other people. I don't have that many right now, 
and could you, can I get a time? Like, I'll see you on Tuesday and I'll get it back to you. So you want to do that. that. It's also time to follow up with them. Yes? Follow up kind of ask, ask with them, but you're talking to them. Never ever let them get away after meeting without at least having that magazine either read, giving it to them because you know they're really interested or just look at it and answer more questions. Okay? Look at this. You get one new entity, they get three customers, they get $100, you get $100. If you train them and you use the tools, especially this magazine, you look at how much more money you can get. I think that's a little conservative, but we did that for you today, so I don't want to get you overwhelmed for some time. Probably. So, plus, I didn't put that number in there. I know what you're thinking. I got it that night. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so, do you think you should have these magazines? I do. And then, if you the ones with the top, we have them for sale out there today. Having Julius and Shelly right here and in that magazine because it's an empowered resource. It really is. Okay, now, Tim's, the second part of Tim's box, I feel like, okay, this is when you get a consultant. Now, I know that out there we have these right here. These are on the Team and Chief website when most of my consultants are signed up. And you get them, this is Eric's pitches in here. How to sign them up. This is a wonderful tool. This gets people started the right way at the right time. That you, need. you don't want them to wait until next month. We have training on January 25th. You don't want to wait until January 25th for training. This is it. And then there's weekly trainings going on. Let them see this right away. And then so if this, the um, Team and Chief Five Quick Start Guide that gives them all, all the things they need to do and how to get started. And sit with them. Go through it. You know, you want them to create your list. Don't tell them. Show them how to create your list. You don't have to sit there until they remember all 250 people in them. You know, who do you know? I don't really know 20. Okay, did you not be your friends this month? Did you, you know, do you have a dry cleaner? Do you go in? Do you go to church? Do you, you know, all these people, you know them. Okay. Now, the other thing, and everybody who is a consultant here has this book. And I don't I don't always have this now, but I keep it with me all the time. Because jump start bonuses are difficult to, to explain if you don't have something. This little table in here about jump starting your bonus, it shows you all six. If you don't let your consultants know that there are six bonuses, you are you're ripping them off. Because the six bonuses, they get their money back. Actually, you can do a bit more because if you're doing the consultants at the same time, they're getting there. So I do know, and I have consultants in here right now. They trigger their bonuses, they trigger more bonuses, and I know they're getting. So I feel better. I feel better when they get their investment back. And like Julius and Shelley say, I can't teach you to be a millionaire if I can't get you $429 back. So this is this is really helpful, and I keep this with me all the time. So. If you don't have the whole thing, these I have many copies of these. I always have, have a copy of this with me, all right? Because this will start. And I've had, well, I run out of line. I'm like, oh, got them. They just don't even just flip it over. Just keep writing. You know, your list. Okay. And then the other thing I carry with me is the home presentation, the home business presentation. And I just keep it with me because when I tell people, let's have a home, this is all we're going to do, we're not going to do a whole lot, let's get you one right away as soon as you, this is a tool, all right? Not a physical tool, but a personal relationship tool, and that's what we're doing for. Okay, and now, we are in the holiday season, this is the time you can reach out to your customers, you can reach out to potential customers, and send a thank you card just for listing, if they did for future, if they looked, if the consultants have looked, Send them a, a Christmas card to say thank you. I appreciate your time. You, you're not selling anything. You're just thanking them. People want to be thanked. People, gratitude is amazing. You know, I waitress my way through college, and for too many, that word is not made up. It's gratitude. I'm this. This is your gratitude to me. If I spill a drink on you, I'm really. I could have been that. I could have been food. Really something wrong with me. <laughs> And maybe because I did still drink on somebody when I first started, but they still did me. They were grateful that I waited on them the way I did. And that's all we want. Just thank them on the stairs for it. So, okay, so here's what we're going to take away. First of all, I've got to put this toolbox together the way it was. I don't know how to put it. I always have the tools with you. Okay? I keep, like I said, I have different. 
packages. I have one at my office, I have one in my car, and I have one at home that goes with me every night to different places. Um, so, and have all the tools. We don't need all of them, but you need all of them at some time. You know, you're going to mix and match. Okay, be prepared. If you're not prepared, the guy with the knife, not prepared. Indiana Jones, yes, that's what they have. Um, the magazines, I believe, are the best recruiting tool, and I think most of your successful people in Hamlet will tell you the same thing. Never give the tool away. Never give that tool without time, day to follow up. You need to follow up. That's a huge tool. And then prepare for the holiday by recruiting the bank card. Remember, just be gracious. This is a fun business. Take <coughs> care with somebody. It'll make their day, and it'll make yours. You'll become a much nicer person when you're when you have gratitude in your heart. Okay, so I appreciate you listening. That was um, my first tool. We do it a little different. Everybody has a little different way of doing it, but um, I just need to be prepared. And so now we're going to we're going to bring up. I don't think anybody's introduced him yet. We're going to do Shelly. The Shelly's not here, but so Julius, I, you probably don't know this man. He's not, you know, kind of a wallflower, doesn't like to speak and, um, and I'm teaching him day by day. Oh, and, um, yeah. and you saw when I said, you want to forgive me, but I'm right there. Maybe right we could not be where we are today in our boats. And a lot of people in this room feel the same way. So I just want to bring it in. So now, what are they going to do? They're going to recognize all of us because that's just what they do. So please help me welcome the executive consultant to the team. Because you guys have worked hard. You have worked hard to, to make team achieve successful, make Maryland successful, and we just want to say thank you. Um, the 220 Club came out of, uh, of a discussion with our leadership team about a year ago where we were talking about, you know, the Ambit Energy is a billion dollar company, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> a billion dollar company, and here's one of the hard facts is that. Out of that billion, the average customer only gets, the average consultant only gets four customers. Think about that. Billion dollar company, and if you look across our company, it's one to four. Okay? Well, in Team and Team, we really don't believe in kind of going with the status quo. So we're like, why is that? Why, why, why shouldn't we get free energy, right? Yay for free energy. Yeah. And, um, and then why shouldn't we be qualified to get paid on every level of residual that Andrew wants to give us? See, because I say like this is a big table with money. Andrew says, this is your table with your name. <laughs> now, it is your choice if you're going to come and take your money off the table that Andrew is laying in for you. So think about that. If, if the average consult customer count is one to four, and we have 250,000 consultants, how much money does Amazon just say, you got to let them on the table? Because those six jumpstart bonuses, you need to have 30 customers to get all six of those. For free energy, Amazon gave away $6.7 million in free energy last year. Let's give Amazon a round of applause. So we are starting, this is our first inaugural announcement of the Team Achieve 220 Club. And guys, what the 220 Club is assembly, you know, a new consultant, someone, what does someone have to do to go regional consultant? Anybody right now? Regional? What do you need to do? Five to six. Five customers, two personally sponsored consultants, and a total of six. That means you can go regional and not have free energy. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm a simple guy. I'm shy. <laughs> but if you can go regional, don't you want to have free energy? Yeah. Doesn't the end say that you need 20 customers to, to be able to qualify for seven of the residual? Yeah. So why would we want that? So we're going to start celebrating that in the beginning. Before you go regional, we want to celebrate you getting your two marketing consultants, and we're going to celebrate you getting 20 customers. 
And people are always ask, you know, they have enough customer points and households. And we're talking about 20 households. 20 people that said yes, that they're going to be your customer and 20 customers. So we asked Ambit to, to run a, a specific report for our team. And last night, Krista Flowers is going to come up to here um, for South Africa. We're going to tell her thank you because it was an ice storm at corporate. All you guys got the email yesterday, and the corporate office was closed. She called John Burke and one of our database people to run a report, to give us a report of everybody who had 20 actual customers, not so that we were accurate because we wanted to celebrate you. So one of the things we're going to do now is that we're going to pull up a list of names. How we're going to run it is because a lot of people have asked is that, so um, what we're going to do, if people have been in the business since the beginning, we want to celebrate you as well. So we're saying through January the 2021st, no matter how long you have been in the business, as long as you have two MCs and 20 customers, we're going to actually pay you if you, if you haven't qualified this time, on the 25th, we're going to pay you. After the 25th event, after the 21st, what we're going to do is this is just going to be for new consultants. So now if your new consultant gets in the business, you're going to let them know, hey, look, you're going to join the 220 Club. What does that do for your business? Every consultant had 20 customers. Wow. <laughs> All right, and so this little pin right here is not just a picture. It's not just a picture. We actually are going to be painting people. This is our brand new lapel pin. Yeah, and, and I will tell you guys, we're excited because we went all walking all around Maryland, Texas, and everywhere. And we're like, what is that? You're going to say, I'm prepared to maximize my income in the industry. Because here's the thing, Andrew promised that we're going to maximize our income by, by having those 20 customers. So first what I want to do is, before I do that, is recognize some promotions. There's some people promoted, and, and I'm excited about that. So I want to ask, um, I know Marcella, this is my Oh, yeah. Yes, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Come on up here. Olivia always says, I would like to have his sponsor, his sponsor come up, his senior consultant, um, just to recognize him and also for him to share for a moment just his his journey in the Come on, Marcel. Oh, 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 The reason why I'm walking back is because it, it really demonstrates uh, a place I came in my life. Uh, when Olivia reached out to me, it became really clear to me that I was going in the wrong direction. And sometimes when you're going in the wrong direction, you need to back up. So if you're trying to get across town and you're going to a deal in the alley, you need to back up. Or if you're trying to get to the highway and you run into a cul-de-sac, it's time to back up. So I had to back up because I had a plan, but the plan wasn't working out that well. And so when Olivia, God bless her, invited me to join in the Abbott, I said, this is the solution. Because what Amber had, what I didn't have, was a GPS system. I had a plan, but it was clear to me now that the plan that I had was not going to get me to my destination. It really wasn't. And so the reason why the GPS system is so important is this, is that when you put the GPS, when you put the destination in the GPS system, it tells you exactly where you're going to go and what time you're going to get there. It also gives you some options. I have an option of taking the scenic route, I, I, I can take the, the, the highway, or I can take the, the, the side roads. Now, because I've spent so much time at the rest stop, I, can, <laughs> I really can't afford to take the scenic route. I've got to take, I got to take the highway, so I'm on the highway with this Andrew program. And the bottom line of it is that probably in the time I have been on the planet, I've done a lot of stuff. 
How many have more than 100 jobs? Uh, this is the first job I had where I get a chance to give myself a promotion. <laughs> and so I decided when I started that I was going to get promoted in four or five weeks. And so this is my first promotion. In January, I'm going to get my next promotion. <laughs> and in six months, I'm going to get to the executive. Uh, and I'm going to give myself permission to do that. All right, but let me tell you just quickly uh, my reasons. I've got reason 1A. And my second reason, not a reason B, is reason 1B. It's not reason 2, it's reason 1B. My first reason is uh, my wonderful wife of almost 45 years, who's been retired for 20 years and has no intention to go back to work. <laughs> and so she believes that she's going to be on the planet 10 years or so after I'm gone. And she looked into the Widows and Orphans Fund and said to me, the money is not there. <laughs> and you owe it to me, so you need to get that money in the fund. <laughs> so she encourages me to get this fund fully funded. And when the government doesn't work, then she has some other methods to, uh, to get me moving. Right? But, but at any rate, this ambulance plan is going to get the Widows and Orphans Fund fully funded so that she doesn't have to concern herself with uh, going out to be a Walmart greeter. Should I take off before she does? Uh, I'm not so sure it's going to happen. But at any rate, uh, my plan, uh, my, my, my why uh, B, what B is this. This is what I love to do. Uh, and I want to be able to do this and not have to do it for money. I want to do it because I love it, because this is my passion. And I don't have enough time to do it with the regular way that I want to do it, but this is what Anna is going to give me. So in a short period of time, I'm going to be able to take my time just doing what I love to do. Amen. So we have to be to give ourselves a pen. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give you mine. We'll take mine. No, we'll give him a pen. Would you want to give him a team of cheese pen? No, they can just remove this off for him. So I took a picture though. Let's take a picture with um and I also, as Marcel was talking about, is fast track in, in the period of four weeks or less, to a large extent that was due to a group of wonderful folks who saw what he saw and saw his vision and signed up under his people. Uh, he was he was with many of them uh, last night to, to celebrate. Some of them could not make it, but he has his Fort Washington team over there. And so, would you give a All right, everybody, we want to give Marcellus a round of applause in front of you. Is Mr. Mozart here? I didn't see her. Okay, so now we get to pin. Uh, there's going to be a lot of names up here, so if you see your name, what I'm going to ask you is you line up to the side very quickly. Um, a new member of the Team Achieve 220 Club. So, so this is for people who have two consultants and 20 customers. Just stand up and come over here, and uh, we want to pin you and recognize you. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. You're positioned for the money. You're positioned for the money. Yeah. And so I know some of my partners are here. Um, and I want you guys, you guys send over. And, um, my partners are here from different organizations. Please line up and send over your people as well. All right, so what we're going to do, we're not going to pin everybody to the table all the time. We're going to have you come up, say who you are, and where you're from. All right. You want to read your name? All right. All right. Okay, just real quick, when I call your name, oh, I need to get in. When I call your name, you got that? All right. Team work. Team work. Team work. Team work. All right. Okay, so let's do this. Kanita Anderson. Woo! Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, Kadena in our organization has more customers than anyone in our own organization. Wow. 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 Okay, Tina and Terry Tombstone in here. Donna Harris, Karen Green. It's all Karen Green. Okay, Lisa Coates. Uh, Maria Matti. All right, Michael Farrow. And then Zimmerman. because he actually just got in under the wire last night, but so he had already run the report. Eric Ben.
And I'm just happy to be able to pin her today as an official member of the 220 Club. <laughs> you know, the, the next person, you know, I want you guys to understand that everybody that is coming into the business um, is comfortable <laughs> with everything and, and building it. And so this young lady is somebody who I have a lot of respect for um, because <laughs> Teresa Newcomb is someone who is just consistent through all the bumps, through all the ups and downs. And I will tell you, a lot of her success is due to, to her incredible sponsor, who you guys saw as one of our leaders. So I'm going to have her sponsor come up to give her her pin. Um, and Tanina Anderson, let's come on up here and let's celebrate Teresa Newton as a sponsor. And you must wear your pins, or we will take them back. <laughs> always bringing, you can count on her bringing somebody to uh, an event every time. Yes. And, you know, I look, at, look up to her at times, and I'm just grateful that you are part of being it. And uh, just keep doing what you're doing. You're excellent leader, and I just thank you. Uh, the next uh, consultant, because he actually has uh, one of his consultants here. Baco, you want to come up with Pastor Willie? Baco, Baco, Baco. Baco, Baco. Baco. Yes. He comes from Richmond, Virginia, every single month. Because as part of this practice, there's a difficulty now that we know accountants 
as part of his practice, he's got people coming in to see him every day. When he says bring your papers in, your financial papers, by the way, bring in your energy bill. Let me see if I can share some ways of saving something there. So Michael will be in the ground. All right. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a, a quick break so that we can get back and make sure we stay on time, guys. Uh, for those of you who uh, did qualify, this is what we will be paying again on January the 25th. So that you get your pins. If you, if you don't have 20 customers, let's go and get our customers to keep you over the holidays. And let's go to our business. Guys, let's take a 10 minute break. 15 minutes. 10 minute break. So let's get back. We want to get into recruiting and also building for the next couple months. Thank you. All up in the camera. Yeah, yeah. Everybody on YouTube is watching. Yeah, you're live. Yeah, live. So, are you able to get a copy of that? Or? Yeah, it'll be on the YouTube channel. You're gonna be on Facebook and do an announcement on Facebook. Oh, I see Twitter. Yeah, it's live. It's left hand live. And, 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 and,
special moments uh, or whatever it is. Uh, it's something that truly really exists in all of us. It's very important that you believe that you are the one. Most people, they raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. They stop growing, they stop working on themselves, they stop stretching, they stop pushing themselves. That a lot of people like to complain, but they don't want to do anything about their situation. And most people don't work on their dreams. Why? Why do you? Because of fear. The fear of failure. What if things don't work out? And the fear of success. What if they do and I can't handle it? These are not risk takers. You spend so much time with other people. You spend so much time trying to get people to like you. You know other people more than you know yourself. You study them. You know about them. You want to hang out like them. You want to be just like them. And you know what? You invest so much time with them. You don't know who you are. I challenge you to spend time by yourself. It's necessary that you get the losers out of your life if you want to live your dream. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. When you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you follow other people, as long as you be a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world. But you will be the best in the world. I'm telling you, you find your value. That everybody won't see it. That everybody won't join you. That everybody won't have the vision. It's necessary to know that. That you are an uncommon breed. It's necessary that you align yourself with people and attract people into your business who are hungry. People who are unstoppable and unreasonable. People who are refusing to leave life just as it is and who want more. The people that are living their dream of earning winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dreams of the people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. If you want to be more successful, if you want to have the gift of being a good one, you want to be a good one, you want to be a good one. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. That you don't have to go through life being a victim. And even though you face disappointments, you have to know within yourself that I can do this. Even if no one else sees it for me, I must see it for myself. Welcome back to training, everybody. We're going to jump around a little bit to get into some training, and then we're going to have our next testimonial. But first, um, the topic, the key to this business is recruiting. And guys, this is a part of the business. If you don't understand anything else, if you want to be successful in network marketing, you have to be an incredible recruiter. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable in areas that you may not have had to deal with before. Because a lot of us, anybody here don't like asking anybody for anything? <laughs> Anybody uncomfortable picking up the phone and calling your friends about this business? Yeah. Here's what I want to tell you that this is not normal. This is not, you know, Shelly and I went to school to be engineers, and we, many of you, we have lawyers in here, we have police officers, we have political um, figures, we have so many different, and we learned that, right? We went to school, we learned that, we understood the steps of that. Well, here's the thing, guys, I want you to understand this is that this is a new career path. And you have to be willing to change something in you to be successful. But here's the one thing about this business. Each and every one of us have the same opportunity. And that is what I love about network marketing. It is the most equal playing field that I've ever seen ever in life. And so to share with you the recruiting part of this business, please take notes. I've gotten a sneak peek at what she's going to talk about. But I will tell you guys, take a lot of notes. This is the key to your 2014. Those who recruit, those who build, will have the bigger checks, will have the bigger businesses. Okay? And I've studied this business over the last three years. And when you talk to Steve Thompson, when we sat in Brian McClure's office down in Texas, when we sat with Chris Chambliss, when we sat with um, Ray Monty when he came down, guys, I will tell you, we have to go out here and we have to recruit and build a big business. We have to get over our fears and go out there and run like a locomotive and not stop no matter what happens. So I want to bring up executive consultant, 
engineer, and guys, in her professional life this year, she's going to be in February recognized as the 2014 Black Engineer of the Year in the United States of America. Um, from the but she believes in network marketing and the business business, so my incredibly intelligent wife, uh, Shelly Weems. <laughs> You know, what happens is when they go out and recruit, and Eric knows this, they want to go out and, and build a force of loyal and dedicated soldiers that can go out and basically fight for war. And they got to be committed, and they got to know what their vision and dream is. So recruiting is exactly the same way, guys. You know, you got to know that in order to have a successful team, you have to build a foundation of successful, loyal, committed consultants. Okay, so to start off, you know, you have to have a recruiting mentality and mindset. And in order to do that, I wanted to share with you a little bit of an analogy that a recruiter is much like a professional athlete, okay? The mindset has to be like that because what is a professional athlete? And I know this from my son, and I see him do this every day. You know, every day of his life, okay, every day of his life when he would go into school and go into practice, he had to have these attributes. You know, he's totally focused, and he's able to work for hours, even, even when he's tired, even when he's at school. You know why? Because he had a vision, he had a dream, that he wants to be the best. And so you know what? That means he's putting everything on the line for this, because you know what? He wants to grow, and he wants to be the best of what he can be. And that means that in anything in life where you want to be good, you can have an intensity, guys. You kind of have an intensity of the dream and the vision. So I'm asking you, do you have the same intensity about recruiting? Think about that. Do you? Oh, yeah. All yeah. right. That's what I heard. Right. Because guess what? This is boot camp. And what are we going to do? Boom! Boom! You got to have intensity. Right? You got to have intensity about your business. You got to be able to say, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be focused. Because, well, you know, my dream is bigger than the fact that it's raining today and I don't feel like going out to a meeting. My dream is bigger today that, you know, because my consultant didn't show up for a meeting, now I don't want to go. My dream is bigger than I had a whole presentation, but you know what? Nobody showed up. But you know what? That's okay. Because your dreams got to be bigger than any of those obstacles that come along the way. Everybody agree with that? Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Okay, so. Three, three elements of recruiting. You gotta have an urgency, guys. You gotta have an urgency. You gotta be excited. And most importantly, like Eric talked about earlier, you gotta be in a hurry. Now, what do I mean about having have an urgency? You have to have an urgency about your business. Because, okay, let me just take a quick poll. How many people, by show of hands, have had someone say they were interested in the business? You even got them to take a look at your website. You did a three-way call with them. You had them come to a meeting, and they still didn't join. Wow, everybody in the room, right? Well, guess what? Let me ask you another question. Did you actually show this business and have an urgency about them joining your business? Did you create that urgency? Show hands. One person, two people. That's what you have to do, guys. You have to create an urgency about getting in your business now. Not two months from now, not six months from now, but now. How do you create that, um, that urgency? Well, you've got to understand what their pain points are, right? You have to ask them questions. And what you do by doing that is now you're able to help them see a compelling reason why they need to get into the business now versus later, right? So if you know someone needs a plan B, and they come and they talk to you, then you have to create that urgency. You know what? Your plan B, you got to ask them, is your plan B going to go away if you join the business two months from now? Is there anything going to change? But guess what? you got to take control of your business today and institute that change yourself. The next thing, you got to be excited, guys. You know, 90% of recruiting is being excited. Nobody wants to get in, in business with anybody 
who's a done? <laughs> who's not happy? I mean, I know I'm not going to want to be motivated. I'm not going to be motivated by that anybody, anybody like that. But guess what? If I'm in business with somebody that's hungry, that's, you know, ambitious, that's like Eric, that's going out, that's meeting with them, that's a person like Terry, guess what? That is infectious, right? Don't you know people in your sphere of influence that they're just, every time you meet them, they're just happy with life, they got joy, there's just nothing that can phase them. Don't you want to be around those people? Absolutely. So guess what? People want to be around people who bring them joy. They have what they don't have. And if you don't have excitement about your business, then I'm not going to want to be in business with you. Make sense? Yeah, Ooh, I love that. The third point is you got to be in a hurry. Okay? And, and let me just take a minute and talk about it. When I say be in a hurry, even when you're on the phone, just stand up and talk and walk around. Because guess what happens when you do that? You create an energy because you're focused on that dialogue. You create a passion. And that's what, that comes through the phone to the person you're talking to. And when they hear that, guess what? They're like, wow, you know, she, she's wired up. You know, maybe I should take a look at this. And then Eric said, I love what Eric said, you know, when you share this with your friends, you have to always be in a hurry. You know, you call them up and you say, hey, listen, you know what? I just got involved with something that is so incredible. But listen, I'm really, I'm getting ready to run. But let me do this. I'm going to call you in a, in a couple hours. In fact, when's the good time to call you? Seven tonight or seven tomorrow? Because I want to show you something that I think is really exciting. But I have to go now. And you need them. Because you know what? You're just planting a seed. You always want to plant seeds for people. And when you do that, then guess what? That, start, that starts their curiosity. You want to keep it simple when you talk to people. You, you don't want to give them a lot of information. How many of us have gotten to this business? And guess what we do? We talk about the customer seeds. We talk about the referral program. We talk about the compensation plan, which we don't know how to explain the compensation plan anyway. <laughs> so we shouldn't be trying to explain it. And then guess what happens? We allow the objection, objection wheel, spinning wheel in people's head to start going, right? So guess what then they start saying? Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Asking all these questions. And then guess what happens? You lose control of the conversation. And when that happens, guess what? It's all done. You know? Tell them, hey, it's visual. I can't explain it. It's visual. I'm going to show it to you. And when I give you a call, I'll show you the website. If they can ask you again, you can share the three questions. But if they ask you again, guys, let me just say this to you. And this is going to be a hard pill for some people to swallow. If they aren't willing to follow the process that you know has allowed Amazon to have 18 billionaires and three purple jackets, okay, because they follow that system, if they're not willing to follow that because they're your friend and they trust you, you gotta walk away. Yep. Right? If they become adamant and say, well, I will, okay, well, you know what, maybe this isn't for you, and that's okay. That's okay. You have a nice day. Well, I'll call you back, we'll go out for dinner. You know, because you don't want to lose a friendship about Amber, okay? You definitely don't want to lose a friendship. You want to keep friends. So don't be afraid to say that. The next thing is, recruiting is about the law of averages. This is about, it's a numbers game, guys. You guys know that. And what I want to share with you guys is, if you are saying you're having trouble recruiting, you're just not talking to enough people, guys. It's just about talking with people. The more people you talk with, I mean, I'm going to call her out, Candace. Candace is a recruiting machine. Candace calls me every day and tells me who she's talked to, who she plans to talk to, who she plans to follow up with, who she's going to bring to a meeting, who she's bringing. I'm telling you, that's how passionate you have to be. You just have to be, a, you can't be afraid to talk to people, right? Because the more you talk, the more people you get in. Now, I know a lot of people get into business and they say, well, you know, I talked to 10 people. And they all said no. Okay. Talk to all people. <laughs> okay? You have to have a champion mindset about recruiting because guess what happens when you do? A champion that talks to 100 people and they get 10 recruits, guess what? They have to fly in their own way. So, the one thing about the law of averages is that if you can do it often enough, it causes a ratio to, be, to appear, right? So, guess what? If your ratio is that you have to talk to 20 people to get one recruit, you can talk to 20 people if you want to recruit. And you just keep doing it over and over again. And let me just say this, guys, because I will be transparent. When I got into this business, a lot of you have seen the tendency of ambition. 
<laughs> I was a hot mess. I couldn't talk, you know, I appreciate Julia's announcing my award. You would think, oh, she's an engineer, she can talk to me. Yeah, I can talk to people about technology. Yeah, that's cool. And I was I was just floundering. But you know what? Just like someone said earlier, you just gotta go ahead and do it anyway. You gotta flounder. You're gonna mess up, like said, you're gonna mess up the first couple times you talk to people. That's okay. It is okay. You just gotta keep doing it. You just gotta keep doing it and doing it for because guess what happens as you improve and as your skills get better and better, your averages and your numbers are gonna increase on the number of people who are gonna say, hey, you know what, this makes sense and I'm gonna get involved in it. And the, and the main thing with this is you gotta you can't recruit for quantity, you have to recruit for quality. You have to recruit quantity to get quality. And the three things here are so important. You can't prejudge. Don't prejudge, guys. Because when you prejudge, then that limits the people you talk to. And really it limits your ability, and I said to, to love them to love them. That means really just forming a relationship. You know, sometimes we won't talk to people because they're like, oh. This person, I want to talk to them because they're very well established. Yeah, but they could be very well established if they need to be no broke. And you never know it. The other thing is, don't pick a winner too early. How many times have we met people just because of their status and what they do? Oh, you know what? When I get this person in the business, they're going to take me to end the <laughs> And they get in the business and they do nothing. <laughs> but that's okay. Because you know what? We're in the business of just talking to people. And the last thing is, you know, talk to everybody. And everybody in your sphere of influence, even when you're out. You know, I can't tell you how many times I'm in a line and people just direct a conversation with me. And I just was talking earlier to, no, I'm sorry, tell me this thing. Yeah. Oh. Tony and Jeff, this is great. I'm a, I still have a lot of, you know, I, I get a lot of material from you guys before I talk. <laughs> so he was saying, he'll, he'll be out and he'll be in a restaurant. Someone else, completely that he doesn't know says, hey, well, what's going on? He's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to name the same somebody else as you do. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what? Well, well, how do you do that? Like, well, how are you able to do that? Right? So, you know, here's the thing, you know, a lot of times in life, you know, we think that we can't do things. But think about Michael Jordan. When he first started out in, in um, basketball, he got cut from his varsity, varsity team in high school guys. But you know what? He did not let that deter him. He just kept steady pace. He kept practicing. He was saying, I'm not going to be deterred. And you know what? He just did it anyway. Because he knew his passion, his vision was bigger than someone telling him he couldn't do it. So the, the secret that I'm leaving you with right here is just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. And remember, recruiting is all you guys are, it's your, all, every one of us, we're just decision collectors. Right? We're just collecting decisions. Yeses and noes. We're just collecting decisions. And it's okay if they say no. Because you know what? When we realize that it's okay for people to say no, let me tell you why it's okay for people to say no. Because you know what? I love a person that knows what they want they don't want. I'd rather you tell me no and then he keep moving than him and hauling and him and hauling and him and he's going to get into the business. So uh, the no is a blessing. At least you say it to the station a lot of time. Here's the quality factors that you want to look for in a prospect. You want them to be ambitious because they have to have a passion to want to build this business. If they have no passion, they have no desire, they have no goal, then guess what? They're not in a hurry to make a change. They got to be dissatisfied. They got to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, how many people are sick and tired of being sick and tired? Okay? That's why we're all in this business because we want to make some changes in our life. Right? But if somebody is comfortable, and they're happy in their situation, they're happy with their job, they're happy with their income, they're happy with everything, it's going to be a little hard for them to see the vision for Andy. Now, I'm not saying they won't see it, but it'll be, they won't have as much passion and motivation to build it. Let's just say that. And the last thing is, they got to be coachable. they got to be coachable and teachable. Because you know what, if you get someone in your business, and you can tell, this is why you have to get to know people. You have to have a relationship with people. You can, and I know I said don't be just, but you can just tell by talking to some people whether or not this business is gonna be right for them. If they come and they're talking to you and they're impressed with themselves, and they won't listen, 
and they're going to demanding and asking questions, they're probably not going to build this business. So make sure you, you, you look at these factors. Are they ambitious? Are they dissatisfied? Or are they coachable? So we can move like water. Let me tell you why this is so important. You know what? What does water do when it hits a rock? It just keeps it just goes around it, right? It just keeps on flowing, right? It doesn't let anything deter it. You know, when it goes, it doesn't try to climb up high hills, it just stays low and steady state. Well, that's how we need to build our business, guys. We gotta just flow. We gotta just, you know, just flow with the situation and move like water. We can't let obstacles or people's, you know, impressions or perceptions stop us from building our business. You know, we can't let them allow us to hit our heads against the wall and say we can't do this business. So you know what? If a person doesn't want to take a look at your business, keep it moving. If a person doesn't want to join, keep it moving. If a person doesn't want to take a look, keep it moving. Because you know what? With the law averages, eventually, you're going to find someone in your circle that's going to say, hey, you know what? This makes sense. You're excited. I want to be involved because I want to change my life. Does this make sense to you guys? Ooh, I love it. Okay, emotion. We talked about this a little bit early. Building your business, emotion versus versus logic. This business is an emotional business. And you heard earlier from the wonderful testimony from Jane and Sue Lee. You're going to hear another one later. This is an emotional business. People get in this because they have a dream. They have something they want to acquire. You go and talk to people about this. Don't talk logically to them. Talk about what matters to them. Right? Understand what matters to them. Understand what they want. Understand what they're focused on. Understand what their needs are. And then once you do that, share the business, but also back it up with, you know, the logic of, of the, the, the emotion of, okay, but this is how I can help you in that situation. When you do that, that's more compelling to them. You know, otherwise, when we use, you know, when we try to be very logical, it becomes, you know, too negative for a person that's trying to absorb it. That doesn't work. And the biggest emotional experiences, you know, happen when we expose people to situations. Think about this. The, the biggest emotional experience that I know that happens in Ambit is what? Ambition, right? Okay. What is the biggest emotional experience that happens in Ambit? all those successful people who have been able to achieve the dream and you're around like-minded people who have the same dream of you, as you and I, what does that do? Doesn't that motivate us? Yeah. Doesn't that inspire us? Yes. Isn't that a shot of an adrenaline that says, you know what? No no obstacle is going to keep me from trudging forward and staying the course. So you got to keep tapping the fact that this is an emotional business. Understand what your prospects need and talk to that, but also back it up with the facts of them and of how it would allow them to achieve their dreams. And guess what also works a lot, guys, and we don't do this? Tell your own story. Tell your own story of why you got into Amber. Wasn't that an emotional decision for you? Don't you think people in your sphere of influence that you want to be in business with would want to know that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is the best way to show people that this business does work and how it's achieved, how it allows you to achieve the things you want. You got to have a vision, and, and you know Eric talked about this a little bit early. Having a vision for your recruiting and for your, even for your business is important. If you have a vision, you got to share it. Share it with people, because you know the main reason why people aren't. Successful in recruiting or any aspect of business of the business of Ambit is because they don't have a vision. They don't have a target to shoot for. Without a target to shoot for, then what are we doing? We just, you know, we gotta have a vision and not reasons. Because when we have a vision, guess what? Then we come up with a plan, an ABC, all the steps, and we execute against it. The main reason why a lot of consultants slow down in their business is because they don't have a positive vision about what they want in this business. They don't have a positive vision about, okay, every week I'm going to target, I'm going to talk to 20 people because I know my ratio is if I talk to 20 people, I get 1%. Have a vision, guys. Think about that because without it, you won't, you won't achieve anything in Ambit. The next thing I want to talk about is, is the magic of tap on you. But before I do that, I want to 
talk about a little bit of an analogy. You know, have you all ever seen in your neighborhood or maybe in your backyard, you've seen a tree and you have a storm and it's kind of leaning to the left? Now, I hope it didn't fall in anybody's house, but it's kind of leaning to the left. And that, what does that kind of indicate above? That, that tree's not doing too well, right? That at any given moment, it could possibly fall down because it's not strongly rooted in the ground, right? Well, the same thing happens with your business. You have to have a business that has a strong foundation or it will not survive the, the long haul that you're in. It. You have to have a strong business that has a strong foundation. And one of the ways that we do that is through tap rooting. And tap rooting, what that's defined as is that you recruit and you, and you train in depth with your, with your consultants. And what that does is helps multiplication at all levels of your business, even the deepest level, and then it helps you to build that foundation. So how do you do that? Well, first, you work, say if you're sense, I'm going to use Julius as an example, I'm going to work with him, he's my new recruit. So I link arms with him, and then I say, Julius, in the next 24 to 48 hours, I'm going to ask you, this is Candace too, a dairy, one of those, get us in front of the most successful people in your network, whoever they are, get them in a meeting, and let us come and share the opportunity. And then out of that, what's going to happen is you're going to get two, three, four um, consultants. So Julius, can you stand up for a second? I want to just do a little analogy. So Julius is my, my consultant. Okay. Now, Julius, you pick three people that are the most successful in your organization that you want to have me come and talk to about them. Your three friends are Terry, Jay, and Sue. Okay? So I go to Julius' house and I brief them on the opportunity. But what I'm doing is I'm a, I'm a scouting talent. The, the talent of talent scouts is like Terry said. So I'm looking for someone that's ambitious and hungry and really wants to make this business grow. So you know what? I found that that was Terry. So I'm going to link arms with Terry. Now I'm going to work with Terry. Like she's my own personal recruit. Now Julius is still going to work with Jay and Sulee. I'm going to work with Terry because you know what? She seemed really hungry and she's really ready to go. So now Terry, I'm going to work with you. And now you're going to have your whole presentation. So now you pick three people that you can come to your, your meeting. Can you guys stand up just for the illustration of this, of this meeting? Okay, so these three gentlemen stand up. So now they're hungry, they're ambitious, and they all three get in. So now guess what? Congratulations. Julius is a regional consultant. Woo! All right. Now I'm going to work with Dennis. I'm going to work with Dennis because Dennis, you know, he was sharp. He came to me and he said, look, what do I need to do to get this business going? So now, Dennis, now you pick three people that you can come to your meeting. Okay. Now I'm going to link arms. Oh, yeah. All right. with these people and helping them build and grow. Okay, so you guys can sit down. Thank you for the illustration. All right? So, so what are you doing when you do that? You're showing them how to build. You're showing them how to build. This is the key word. you got to show people how to build, not tell them. You show them how to do the list. You show them how to write. You show them how to do the presentation. You show them how to do a three-way call. Because what can happen after you do that? Then your, your business is just going to grow perpetually because now you have individuals in your business and know how to build it and build it properly. So here's some goals that come out of tap with Well, first, it helps you get your first new recruit, right? And just like when I went and I worked with Julius, now I'm going to repeat the process with people on his team. So you just keep repeating this process over and over and over and driving depth and working in depth to build your organization. What happens is also it duplicates quickly because you know what? I'm personally showing them how to build. I'm not, I'm not taking it for a chance. I'm not hoping they're going to listen to a call. I'm working with them personally. And when that happens now, your organization just duplicates quickly and you just start growing by getting sit down. It also tests the commitment of the people. You quickly can learn who's serious about this business. If I link arms with Julius and I say, listen, Julius, if you do 90, if you do 10% of the work and I do 90% of the work, is that a deal? And he says, yes, and he's only doing 2.3%, I'm out of here. 
You know? <laughs> And now because it's Dennis and Terry coming and they're doing 30% of the work, well, guess what? I'm going to work with them. And the key that you guys have to understand is it doesn't matter where they are in your organization because guess what? It's your business. This is what you have to understand. Don't get all caught up in the corporate hierarchy type of theory that, you know, if Catherine is three levels deep in my organization, oh, I can't call her because if I call her, then this is going to get mad at me. This is your team. And guess what? If I'm helping Catherine, is that helping Dennis? Yeah. Is that helping Terry? Yeah. Is that helping Julius? Yeah. So what's the problem? Yeah. Right? So we gotta change our mindset about this, right? And the next thing is, what happens when you're working with a fired up prospect? Oh man, it's crazy. You know, they're passionate, they're motivated. And guess what? The, you know, the potential for your business is just unlimited. And then always the next last thing that you're always doing, you're always trying to find another leader that can take over this whole tech recruiting process for you. Because you want to work yourself out of a job. I mean, because we don't want a job, right? <laughs> but if we can get some trusted lieutenants in our organization in depth that can work this tech recruiting process, do you know how powerful that would be? Do you know how powerful that would be? Thank you. Is this helpful? Yes. Okay. So what are the results of that? Well, of course, you're going to have a massive national team, right? Because now you have recruits all across the United States and internationally when we go there that are building your trusted team of soldiers to go out and run this business. And the next thing is, because of the fact that you're tech rooting, now you're duplicating in the correct way, because you're using the correct process, but also now you're multiplying with seasoned consultants. So you not only have duplication, you have multiplication. And then what that happens, it happens is because now you're you're building in depth, you're building at you know a wide now, guess what you're able to do? You're able to maximize your compensation, the compensation plan at all levels. Not just whoa. Guess what? Because you know, at the end of the day, this, you know, it is nice to make a little bit of money, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what this is all about, right? Don't we want Ambit to replace our current income? So guess what? Tackling is the way to go. And then it creates a solid foundation in your organization of loyal, committed consultants. And why is that? Because guess what? When I go and work with Julius, and I go and work with Dennis, and I go and work with Terry, and I go and work with Kathy, do they feel like I'm committed to them? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So in turn, won't they be committed to me? Yeah. Yes. And guess what? We're all smiling, walking to the bank. <laughs> right? To change. So the takeaways that I, I want to leave you guys with is one, with recruiting, you have to have a sense of urgency. You know, create that sense of urgency. Understand what matters to them and tell them they need to do it now to get into your business rather than later. Recruiting is a numbers game. Like I said, it's the law of averages. Figure out what your ratio is and just do it. Just go out and do it. That's the secret of this. You know, stay the course and do it anyway. And you know, make sure your, your recruits have the recruiting qualities that I talk about. They have to be heavy ambitious, they gotta be sick and tired of being sick and tired, but more importantly, they gotta be coachable. Because if they're coachable, they're gonna listen, if they're listening, they're gonna grow. And guess what that also is gonna happen? When they're coachable and teachable, are they gonna teach and coach their team the right thing? Yeah, that's right. All right, that's the main key about that. The second thing, the third, the well, third, fourth thing is, you gotta move like water, guys, and just collect those decisions. Keep it moving. Don't be deterred by no's and obstacles and anything that comes your way. And then understand the importance of emotion versus logic. You know, tap into understanding what are those hot buttons that are causing the folks in your network to look for a plan B. Understand that and help them to understand through a compelling reason of your why or other people's wives, don't be afraid to call people in your network that may be a, 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 a state trooper that has done this business. You know, one of the things I wanted to say, I, I thought about this earlier, I never ever want to hear anybody say they don't have any time to build this business. They have a family with six kids who <laughs> can build this business. Amen? Amen. Who wrote? All right. And have a positive vision. Have a vision for your business. You know, without a vision, you won't have a target, guys, and you won't know what you're shooting for. You just have reasons. When you have reasons, <coughs> you never really define steps to achieve things. And the last thing is I've talked about is tap, tap rooting is helping you. It's going to help you build an explosive business. 
you know, because it trains you how to build a desk, it helps you to multiply, but more importantly, it helps you have a duplication that allows us to maximize the compensation plan to its full extent. So guys, I hope that this has been helpful. I hope now you're going to go out there and be recruiting machines. And when you think of me and you're doing this, you say, <laughs> This is really the key to how you build the business and build it for success long term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to go into the time to go right into to, to kind of my closeout training topic because there's some things I want to give, give to you. Um, and we have some specific things at the end that we want to give to each and every person. So I want to make sure that uh, we have time for that. Um, so I'm going to jump right into what I call the first 12 months. And you know, this week some of you are joining me on uh, our new mentoring call, which Everybody will get information on that um, before we leave. Um, but I uh, had an interesting call, and this, initially the training I was going to do was really going to be around um, building the business for profitability. I thought I love the compensation plan. Um, but I had so many of you give me a call after um, because um, I did a talk, a very simple talk, just on, on how to train. And, and, I, and I guess I took it for granted because when I got into Amit, I um, when you're an adult and you're paying bills and you take care of kids and, and you have life things, you might know, like, <laughs> and you're going to work and you're dealing with people that you work with and you're dealing with supervisors you can't stand. I know everybody loves that. But, but what I find is that we get to a point in life where when we talk about dreaming, it's almost um, like a joke because we believe kids dream. Uh, but so we've gone through life, we've struggled, we've had ups and downs. But I find is that people come into network marketing a lot of times broken. Right. And we don't talk about that enough. We don't talk about the fact that, that we have fathers who are out here struggling trying to make sure their kids are okay and, and they lost their job and, and, they, and they're trying to make their husband and wives hoping and praying and it works. Because they know that they need that additional income just to make sure they can pay put food on the table. Because we we don't talk about the vision and where we can go because the struggles of every day beat us up. And and somebody called me, I had somebody call me and they said, Julius, you know, um, I went to a meeting and said, you know, that call you had on, on dreaming, I needed that. And this was somebody I totally didn't expect to say it to me. And in bottom line is I realized I wanted to share that. I, I put in two quick slides about our business and recapping what you learned, but then I'm gonna spend the rest of the time really digging into how to dream, how to make a real dream become a reality, and what we do to sabotage ourselves. Because dreaming sometimes does make even feel immature. We may even sometimes we're in situations where our friends and our wives say, you talk about dreaming, how are you going to dream? We got bills to pay. <laughs> dream next week. <laughs> but you know, that's life, right? That's life, honey. We get into stuff, and the struggles of life still happen to us. And so the first thing I'm going to go over is the first 12 miles. This is about the business. I'm going to recap kind of all the stuff you've seen and make sure you understand the foundation because at the end of it, you can dream, and we can clearly make a thousand to ten thousand to a hundred thousand dollars a month coming to your home, but you cannot ignore the foundation of what it takes. So you heard about you heard about the roadmap, okay? Everybody know what the roadmap is by now, right? Yeah. Okay, we have roadmaps here. You can download it on the website. If you're not spending time to invest in learning how to teach your team how to be successful, you're hurting your dream already, okay? Because I'm not going to ignore that you have a responsibility to, to achieve your dream, and that responsibility is to learn your craft. You spend so much time in your career. How many different careers do you do? What, what do you focus on? Service man, what kind of electrician? Electrician, what kind of unemployed. Unemployed. So, but you, but here's the thing: that no matter what happens, you spend time doing something, right? You have to learn. You have to do a training. Somebody could be, you know, air police officer, um, Shelly engineer, cab driver. You had to go through something. They either had to watch you drive, you know, the service man, you need to, to do X, Y, Z, learn systems. And we will spend more time 
Helping somebody build their company in their future, but we will not build our own. It is the most psychological screw-up that I see every day that somebody will tell me I will get up at 5 in the morning, drive two hours, sit in someone else's office, help a CEO live his dreams. But then when I ask you to come to a meeting and it's raining, you tell me no. I want you to understand this is different. You have to change how you think to have a better tomorrow. And I'm more passionate about this now because I see somebody who is out of work struggling. And I have a lot of respect that you're here. Because I have friends who are out of work struggling who will call me and ask me to share their resume but won't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm, not I'm talking about PhDs, guys, I'm an engineer and program manager. They call and they're like, Billy, it's like, you know, the base salary, everything's 150000 I'm looking for a VP <laughs> position and they're sending me stuff on LinkedIn and, they, and I said, well, look, I'm working on a project. <laughs> And it may or may not be for you, but I want you to take a look. Well, Julie, you know, I, I'll look, but, but after I saw that video, it looks like network marketing. And you did a question, I said, are you telling me that if we can make money on electricity, that that doesn't make sense to you? He said, well, no, no that, that makes total sense. Okay, because you're very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sharing a way that we can make money on a commodity people are going to pay for the rest of their life. But you're telling me that it doesn't make sense because of the marketing model? Why does your company want the company that you used to work for that laid you off? How do they market their products? Oh, well, we do all kinds of, we have a sales team and we have a business development team and everything else. Okay, well, well network marketing says that relationships are stronger than throwing paint against the wall. But this is not for you, I understand. Thanks, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Think about that. And he will sit there for a year without a job before he can do this business. And so the foundation is simply the roadmap that, that is step one for us. You get in and you, and, you, and you learn the basics. Here's the thing, it is very simple. What I find is that it's so simple, it's simple not to do. It is, it's simple not to do. And then what we say is gather 20 customers. Get some money, get some checks in your pocket. Get free energy. If Andrew only paid you $50 of free energy, would that be worth it? Yes. If it's $50, you don't have to pay. Then we say it's by sharing the business, you're going to get two people that get in. Okay, you're going to just share. Even if you're horrible, I love it. People just make a lot of calls and you're terrible. They have to get people to get in the business. <laughs> I'm not going to say terrible. I'm saying they, they have some struggles. <laughs> and you know, some, you know, consistent effort is incredible because when, you know, when I when I talk about this, and she doesn't know how much I think about her, but I think about the time this young lady came to my house, and, and I, I really didn't know who she was. And and um, she was in my organization, but she was so many levels deep that she, had, you know, just I mean, just, and she says she said to me, she said, um, you know, um, you know, Julius, this is uh, Annette Zimmerman, and um, you may not know me, but I'm in your downline, and uh, I need help because my sponsor and my sponsor sponsor and my sponsor 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 and my sponsor sponsor all really not they're not doing anything, but I want to build this business. So I said, sure. I said, you know, I like testing people. You guys know me. I said, sure. Come over on Sunday, 12 o'clock. Because my thing is, how serious is she? Commitments. Everybody knows Shelly and I do not do anything. We don't do anything on Sundays. We do a call at 8. That's the one that's going to get out of us. But she came and she sat down. We sat at the table. We went through the basics of building Ambit. And she started building the business. And then, as we saw her promote the regional consultant, she said, Julie, this is what I do next. Started making calls, like call after call after call. She said, I don't know if I'm saying the right things, but if I'm not, all I have something to do is talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing is that if you're not utilizing your upline support system, you're not trying to achieve your dream. This is not about you doing this on your own. This is not about, you know, I love it. People always say, you and Shelly must be so busy. Seven thirty-eight, faithfully, Terry Wiz calls me every day. <laughs> and you know, I, I gotta say, and then 
I had a special call to somebody who I'm talking to a lot more. He said, look, if you're hot, I'm going to call you. I said, I'm hot. I'm hot. He said, well, I'm a bitch. They say 5 a.m. I said, well, I'm up at 6. <laughs> So you better call me at 6. Or they call me at 6 a.m. <laughs> and guys, here's the thing. All I'm saying is the support system is there. Let's look how we get over our own egos and pride and utilize what's in front of our face. Because our dream is more important than how we feel. You know, and, and we may be here from a couple of our consultants. Me and JD talk and text all the time. Those of you who want some of my text messaging groups. Um, I will tell you, um, Kanina, who um, in her run to senior consultant, I know that with her recruiting organization, and, and just talking to each other, Ernest, Dave Ernest and, and Jamie, when we talk to them, I mean, they are just a part of our family. And, and so as the more and more we talk to you, it's not about that we know or can do more than you. Because we're all, we all got orange box. But why wouldn't you give you the support system that's in front of your face? Why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we do that as a team? And then, you know, Shelly talks to Candace and, and, and look, this is my time. Okay, all right. Thank you. All right, my wife keeps me under control. <laughs> and so, so then you join the 220 Club. Why is the 220 Club so important? It increases your residual. The 220 Club is about your residual income. If every consultant does 220, they're going to promote, right? Their teams are going to promote, they're going to have success, and it's guaranteed. So as soon as they get in, why not start talking to them? Hey, look, here's what happens when you get 220. First, you're, you're going to get a check from Ambit next week because we trigger our first bonus. How fast? 24, 48 hours. Because we sit down right away. I sit down with Eric. Eric signed up. Me and Eric start making calls together. Eric doesn't have to answer every question, does he? No, because I'm right there. So we can trigger your bonus right away. So it's about showing your consultant how to do it. And then you can help that consultant gather a team of six with, with the roadmap. He's going to go regional consulting. And, and we always say go six to ten wide. Because we go wide for profitability. And we go in depth. We tap roots for stability. Because <laughs> we need money right now, right? Everybody yeah. wants money right now. Who up? Money right now. Now, now. Now, now. You have to recruit in order to get paid now. That's what our bonuses are. Our team builder bonus and our jumpstart bonuses are money right now. If you have people going 220 in your organization, you're always going to have bonus money. The rule of thumb is that you need to have a check from AMB every week. That's how you know you're building. A check from AMB every week. The only way to do that is to be talking to two to five people every day and asking them to share to look at your video. If you're not doing two to five people a day, you're not ready to build a business. As me and Shelly did, did three to five every day in the car. Because she went to Tyson's Corner, I went to the Pentagon. Every day in the car. Calling friends, hey, look, we're working on a project. I'm in a car on the way to the office. I want you to take a look at what I'm doing while you're in front of a computer. But we'll be in front of a computer this evening when I get off, and I'll call you back then. That's all we did every day. She put postcards on the countertop. Take your three postcards. You're the three people you call every day. It took me about 15 minutes to call people and invite them to look. Who can do that every day? Because it's about every day. It's not about lots. We talk about this big lift. It's about every day. It's about when it rains and it snows and, you, and your wife's mad at you and she's happy with you. It's about when you feel tired, when the manager got in there. I would love making calls coming home because my clients would get on my nerves so bad. I was like, I can't do this anymore. So let me call, let me call a friend. And he said, yeah, I'll look at it, Julie. So yeah, and I'm having a friend over on Thursday. And then he would come over on a Thursday and look at it. We do a home meeting. And next thing you know, we get 10 people every week in our living room. And next thing you know, we had 15 people. And then we were jumping around home with Miss, Miss Olivia. We were, we were jumping from house to house because there was 50 people on a Saturday in our home by 3, 3 to 5 every day. No matter how I felt, no matter what was going on, I knew I was building something big. And then if you go, go regional consultant, you can do that in 30 days. The target is to go regional in 30 days. Why wouldn't you go, if you started today, in an age of birthday, you call it three to five every day, working with your sponsor or your online senior consultant. And if you have a dud for a sponsor, go up another level, okay? Now, I'm just going to be straight up. There are dud sponsors, okay? Get over it. You don't have time to sit in law and cry. Is your dream worth you achieving it? 
You find somebody else. Here's the one thing, guys, and people, and Terry gets a bad rap because people say Terry is kind of like, you know, you always talk about Terry. <laughs> because here's the thing Terry will call me until she hears from me. <laughs> Terry won't, she called me at 7 30 sometimes, my pillow got me tied up. <laughs> but, uh, you know, <laughs> but I'm glad that no matter what it is, Terry called me five times a day. I will never, ever be bothered by her calling me because her dream is big enough that she's going to get her answer because it's that important. But then some people say, oh my God, well, I called him one time and he didn't call me back. Or I called this person that I was trying to share a plan with, and they didn't call me back, so I'm not going to call them again. <laughs> Pastor Kenny Smith, top 38 home runner, had to hear about that for six months. Ray Monty told Chris Chambers no seven times. <laughs> Brian McCord told Jerry Thompson Jr. no five times. <laughs> Think of decisions that you miss because you don't want to go back. And so, guys, here's the thing is that as you build it, I'm going to jump to this. This slide here just says, once you go RC, all you're going to do, and I love the horn, because that's what we do. All we do is keep calling. I'm going to keep calling you, because until they tell me no, we're still in business. We're still talking, because I'm going to go sponsor six people once I go RC. And I'm going to help those six people. I'm going to get them in the business, be excited, say, hey, look, join the 220 Club. We have a club, where we want to pin you, and we want to pin you next month. We're having training in January, and, and I want you guys to be recognized. It's Brand new 220 club members of Team Achieve and Ambit Energy. And what happens when those six people you sponsor on your regional coast, all they do is go join the 220 club. Guess what? You just got promoted to senior consultant because now what you did was just help a few people join a, a small little club that sponsors two people and they gather 20 customers, your residuals going out, your brand new, you're getting a residual check bigger than Shelly and I's or anybody else's because now everybody's going out and getting 20 customers. They're getting checks. All these people here are getting their Young Star bonuses. They're excited. But all I'm saying is this is a basic process, and now you're a senior. I don't go past this. Because if you know how to do this, you can go executive. If you know how to do this, you can go national. If you can do this, you can get a million-dollar check. Here's what it leads to. You have to understand that the 220 Club is simply about consistent, persistent effort over time. Even if you a billion dollars with an average of one consultant in every four customers, what could you do with two consultants and 20 customers per consultant in the next 24 months when Amazon going to go $2 billion? What could you do? It's not going to always feel good. It's not going to always, you're not going to always feel like. You know, I love Tim Wiss. Tim Wiss is a, a quiet guy, and he's probably the top recruiter of his house. Because he's like, look, you know, I'll, I'll take a guy for, he's not going to, Tim is not, you know, I'll wait for him to come to the meeting in camos and not jacket. But, you know, bottom line is that Tim is just going to be consistent. He is so consistent about sharing the business. <laughs> And you know, people always wonder, you know, when Teresa Newcomb was senior, people were like, what in the world? Because she was consistent. Those who are consistent will win every single time. 80% of people quit that work marketing. 80% will leave. 80% guarantee, without a doubt, they say, look at the person on your left and the person on your right. <laughs> Them plus three more will be going on the next time you come back. Because Bottom line is that people just don't have the same power or the big enough dream. And so, so real quick, as I just for, for time sake, I'm going to go through this and give you a blueprint for, for how to build your dream. Okay, this is a blueprint. This is um, based on um, John Maxwell book, Putting Your Dream to the Test. It is something that I have read and I believe in wholeheartedly because there's so many distractions to your dreams. Dreams come in a size too big so that we can grow into them. If you're comfortable with your dream, it's not big enough. 
If you're comfortable in achieving your dream, it's just not big enough. You know, for me and Ambit, right now, I will tell you, without a doubt, my first goal is to hit $100,000 a month a day. Do I know how? Do I have that perfect picture right now? No. But what I do know, it's possible. I know that. If I don't know anything else, I know that's possible. <clears throat> okay, Brian worked seven years. He's at $500,000 a month. You know, he did it in Texas. Brian was trying to figure it out. They didn't have video. I got videos. I got PowerPoint. They didn't have any of that. And I had 11 states when he only had two. So I know the pieces are in So what's the only difference between Brian and me and Brian and each one of you? Time and massive action. And so what is your dream? Most people don't really understand what their dream is because we make these fairy tale kind of, my dream is to hit the lotto. <laughs> You've been playing it for 20 years. You still ain't here. You got to get this <laughs> <laughs> And so a genuine dream is a picture and a blueprint of a person's purpose and potential. But all dreams do not lead to purpose. I, and and, and I, I want you to know I've read about dreams and everything else, people's goals and vision. I want you to understand there are dreams that will lead you to frustration. And I need you to understand, most people don't talk about this, but being a daydreamer is not going to change your life. A daydream is a temporary distraction from your, from your current miserable state. So what's the, and then I want you to understand this, I'm going to bring this back because I want you to understand that we have to be more serious about how our dreams are shaped. Daydreamers, all they care about is a daily distraction and they go back to their life. And then they, every once in a while, they step back into their dream and they go back and forth. Then you have idealistic dreamers, and their whole thing is that how the world would be just if I could change. <laughs> the thing is, the dream can't happen without a strong, consistent effort. The thing is, is that we like to talk about, and, and, and one, of the, one of the dreams here, and I'm not going to go through the 12 of them, but the bottom line, the one of them is, is that our dream. Is that these fear dreamers? Because of all the stuff that happened yesterday, we're almost afraid to dream today. We're almost afraid to think about, and if we talk about, and they say, Look, well, I'm happy with my life. You know, can I really have a million dollar house in my life? Can I still have a job? Can I still have all this? Can I still invest, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into my church? And, and can I still, you know, I'm from Baltimore. I will tell you guys, one of my, my dreams is that I want to own a huge part of Baltimore City in real estate. That's a dream of mine because I love my city. Good, bad, or different ups and downs. That is one of my dreams. I want to own half of Canton and Bells Point. I want to be able to, one time I had, uh, I have a coach, guys, and you guys met that me. One of my coaches, um, Ricky Gooch, last um, training. And by the way, Ricky said, well, look, first thing you got to do, you got to go see it. If, you, if you're not spending time to go see where you want to go, if you want a yacht, you need to go and look at some yachts. Because if that dream isn't real enough for you, you're not going to do anything about it. And then you have vicarious dreamers. They love dreaming to other people. They can tell Steve Thompson's story a million times. <laughs> I love Steve. I've got to go on the yacht. He can't go to Baltimore to hang out. We got to enjoy him. We got to go pick him up from his private plane. But Steve's success is not my success. <clears throat> Don't get me wrong. We need to use the stories in Ambit to continue to validate this business. But when it comes to your dream, you better own it. And I love that. I meet with a lot of successful people and share Ambit with. My thing is, I don't care how big your ego is, I don't care how much you think you have done, if you are getting up and going to work, leaving your family every day, if you don't have an option to do your own thing, you haven't made it. And I love when I talk to doctors and lawyers. Guys, let me tell you, doctors and lawyers just make more money for working very hard. Mm -hmm. So we don't talk to them, but they need you more than you can imagine. And the other kind of dreamers are romantic dreamers. It's romantic. Their belief is that if I can make somebody else happy, 
world will be gorgeous. The thing is that your dream has to be your own. You can't do it for somebody else. It won't last long enough if you did it for somebody else. Career dreamers, if I just got the best job in the world, if I got a better job, it'll be okay. If I could just, if I could just get a better job, it's, 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 that's my dream. If I could climb up that corporate ladder, it's going to be okay. And the last one, material agreement, if, if I had all the wealth in the world, all my problems would be something. Now, I'm not saying that you don't help. <laughs> but when you're talking about your dream, it's something that's going to stay and be consistent. Who wants to have a lot of money and then not have that? And so, so here's the thing. If, if you're one of those dreamers, it's okay. And if, if, if you're one of you, I want you to know there's good news. You can reshape your dream. And I'm going to show you how to reshape it, how to overcome obstacles, and how to live that dream. Because there's so many things and roadblocks that we deal with when we dream. And, and I will tell you, in ambit, in, in ambit energy across the country, what I find is that we, we have a lot of people in this business that already have had careers. Okay? A lot of people, we've all experienced life. We've had jobs. We've... We've, we've done some great things, we, we take care of our families, and we're at a point in life like, what, what's next? Do I keep running this hamster wheel? Do I keep running the hamster wheel over and over and over and over again and hope that something happens? Or, or can Ambit really, really make a change in my life? And that's where most of my consultants and my organization are. Can this really work? Can this really be this big thing that you're talking about, can this really allow me to have time with my family? Or is this just a, you know, a friend of mine used to call it because I'm from Baltimore. You know, the show called The Wire. Some of y'all might know. But they say, is that just a pipe dream? Am I just fantasizing? But here's the thing. When you latch into a dream, a dream is so embedded in you. Anybody here got children? Children? Okay, here's a quick analogy. If your child was locked on the other side of this wall, and you saw smoke coming under the door, and you hear your kids screaming, Mommy, Daddy, there's a fire. Is there anything that could stop you from getting through that door? I mean, there, there are some of you that literally would, if the door was steel, you would break your arms and your legs trying to get through that door because and some of you, when I said that, in your heart, you felt it. There's this, this twin, right? This twin in your heart, that, 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 that feeling right there, that's how committed to your dream you have to be. Because the only thing I promise you that when you become a dreamer, you're going to have so many people that, that they give you and discourage you in achieving it. That's the promise I give you right now. People are going to, to think you're crazy. They're going to say, well, you've been living your whole life. You've been working your whole life. What are you talking about now? And, and being discouraged by others is going to be the number one roadblock you hit when you start dreaming. They're going to be like, what do you think? You know, Olivia, you've been practicing law for 30 plus years. You've been handicapped? Thank the Lord. They're going to say, you know, um, show you, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Then Terry, you've been at Northern Roman for 28 years. And you're out here pushing. What? <laughs> because when you start to dream and you want to do what? You want to retire your husband. Well, you want to tell why are you doing that problem? Why do you, why do you think? What do you do? I don't get this thing. You know, where your kids in it. And Jeremy wants to go to Nashville to live. Well, well, my thing is that her dream of being able to fly to Nashville whenever she wants. And also have him get that big house or whatever he wants. That's a dream that I know because, because people talk about their dreams with people who are dreamers. The thing is that being hindered by past disappointment and hurt stops us from dreaming. Because you're going to make mistakes. Everybody remember that? Everybody remember that all the things? <laughs> well, let's forget a little leave them in the trash today. Okay? Because you can't let yesterday stop you tomorrow. And that is so important. And, and then the other thing is the habit of selling for average. Average is comfortable for a lot of people. It is comfortable for so many people because if you have a job and a job is paying you and you're paying your bills, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I have a thing. I'm doing a little bit here. I'm doing a little bit there. But here's how Shelly and I look at the image. 
And when I tell you guys, it's like just having financially uh, a bucket of money on the table. For us, money is time and freedom. You know, this year our son went to college, and you know he's four hours away, and literally we got to go down and stay and see him for all his football games. I think the, we went out of town to Italy to one time we didn't go to one. But the freedom of going to him and spending time with him, whenever we wanted, we wanted to leave on a Thursday. We didn't have to ask a job to do that because Andrew's going to make a deposit on the fifteenth every month. They're still going to do it, you know. I even got a little, as some of you know, some of the leaders know, I, I got a little demotivated. I was like, I don't know, you know, I, I, was, I was in a funk. You ever been in a funk before? No. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was in a funk. And, and Abbott, you know, the 15th came, and I came out of my funk. <laughs> <laughs> because Abbott, Abbott, Abbott continues to pay us for what we started. Can you take my fear now? People say, what is your my fear is missing what's in front of my face. Amit is going to go to $2 billion. Yes, and there are some of you in here that will be retired, financially free, and not working at all. And I'm going to have to force you to go do something. <laughs> do something? Yes. Come on, Jay. <laughs> the kids are off at college. Go do something. <laughs> You know, but, but the thing is that these things here, these roadblocks, be aware of them so that when you see them, you don't get surprised. Sure. Be aware of them and put yourself around some different people. Right. There will be people in your business, and this is just the reality, there will be people on your team that tell you why this isn't going to work. Because they join for a hobby. They need a hobby. <laughs> And if some days you're like, can you, I don't get it. Because if they have a dream, they're going to be at every training. They're going to be at every meeting they can be at. They're going to be involved as much as they can because it's about their dream. It doesn't matter. Here's the thing. Not that I, I love all of you. But in, in every single person in this room, I just couldn't stand. Mm. I'd still be in this room. Because my dream is bigger than anything that anybody here can stand for me. And I want, you know, I want everybody to go home and think about that because we talk about dreams, but I want you to, have to go home and think, what truly is my dream? In my core, in the core of who I am, why am I going to build this business and not quit? And that's a tough question because a lot of you may not even know that answer right now. And then the, the last part for me before I jump to the jump to my my the, yeah. the last part for me is how do we take all of that? How do we take the we have the hand of us? Um, how do we take all of this? How do we take everything you learned today? How do we wrap it up? Because 2014 is coming, okay? And a year has gone by fast. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. Yeah. And you know, 2014 is going to come, and we'll be here again at the end of 2014. But what will be different for you? What's going to be different? A lot of things. A lot of things. Oh, like that. <laughs> Here's the thing. In 12 months, it took Shelly and I six months to pay our mortgage with that. It was not comfortable. It didn't always feel good. It didn't always, you know, I didn't always feel like going to the meetings. I didn't always feel like making the calls. But I said, if this thing could work, what can I do? What can we do? Can we get our time back? Can we, we work 12 hours a day all the time and just exhausted. But here's the thing, is that if some of you will leave here today and have a plan, and you're going to go out and execute a plan. Anything that happened yesterday in your ambient business doesn't matter, okay? So throw it away. Throw it away, because yesterday cannot help you right now. It's today moving forward, right? Yesterday happened, you learned some stuff, but we got to let it go, and we're going to start fresh. And in our commitment, and Team Achieve, Shelly and I's commitment is to run with runners. That's, that's just, because the thing is that I can, I can run with you, I can cry with you, I can have tissue, I have tears. <laughs> Even if you fall down, I put a band on your knee. But Ambit Energy will set people's lives financially free. And I believe over the next, we're going to hear some things that simulcast. Simulcast is coming. Everybody should be registered for simulcast. 
we're going to be announcing, we're definitely going to be announcing some new territory this time. Okay? But if we have not mastered the basics of how to build the business, it won't matter. Okay, so, so here we go. What you have in your hands is a plan. It is a very simple, simple document that is just going to help you get your year started. Some of you have calendars. I love Tim had a whole calendar. But if you don't have a calendar, how do you know what's happening next week? Right? If you don't have a plan for what's going to happen next week, people always say, well, Julie, really, how do you know how much money you're going to make in every week to week? Well, my week is already planned out. I'm already planned out four weeks. I know the home meetings I have next weekend. I know the one-on-ones I'm going to do this week. I know what calls I need to make. Because if we work for a job, wouldn't you know those things? They have on your calendar, everybody has Outlook, they have computer calendars. They already have on your calendar what you're going to do next week. But we'll do that for somebody else's dream. That CEO is happy that you are going to be at every meeting he tells you to be at. And it's on your calendar. But then why would you know next week every single presentation you were going to go to by now? You should already have a plan. Okay, I'm going to Silver Spring on Monday. I have some guests coming to Holy Mills on Tuesday. On, on Wednesday, I'm going to be on a webinar because I got some people that I'm going to get on an online webinar to take a look. On Thursday, I'm going to go to Timonium. On Friday, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a home meeting. On Saturday, the thing is, guys, that I'm just going to have a plan. Because, yes, yes, we just, I mean, once we saw how big this could be for our family, you know, my son is a consultant now. He's in the school for international business. I'm excited for him. I said, son, you can go to college, you know, football scholarship. But here's the thing is that you're in an international business degree, and, and I'm looking at what's happening in kids coming out of college. We're going to have a hand of business by the time we graduate. This going to at least be throwing off four to five thousand dollars a month. So when he comes home for Christmas, he'll be home next. He'll be home next week. I said, well, what are you going to do over your break? He said, well, build my hand of business. So he'll be home Tuesday because he's studying communication. Don't we communicate? He's studying accounting. Doesn't he need to count that money? <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. All I'm saying is, is that it's all about you right now. And this action plan that, that we put together is a very simple document that just says, for the next four or five weeks, let's, let's create a plan. Okay? New Year started for us today. Let's get on the phone, call everybody we know, everybody we know, and say happy holidays. <laughs> it's been an incredible year. I want you to take a look at something that me and my wife are working on, or something I'm working on, or, and, and everything else. It may or may not be for you. But the new year is coming, and I wanted to call everybody I know to make sure that they had a chance to look at something that could change their 2014. I just want to call everybody and know. It may be somebody that you don't like or don't like. Hey, look, I know we haven't gotten along, Eric, for the last 10 years. But 2014 is coming, and, and, and I'm working on something that I just wanted to share with you. It may or may not be for you, but I'm going to be in only mode on Tuesday. Can I pick you up and we go, maybe go and then get a bite to eat, and we can see each other even though we can't stand each other? <laughs> But if, if, if I said for every call that you made, I would pay you $1,000. How many calls would you make? That's what I'm you call everybody. You'd be grabbing people off the street. And, hey, look, I'm going to call you right now. That's the level of urgency you need to have with AMP. The people with that level of urgency, you'll see them grow. They're going to be people that get into this business in the next week, and they'll be executives in the next 12 months. Why should it be you? Guys, we're so excited and so honored about everything that you're allowing us to do because we're growing by helping you grow. I will tell you, I've grown so much as a leader and as a person in Hamden. And, um, and I want to thank you for that. I'm going to give yourselves a round of applause. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is the, the book that we handed out, we got those prints that you can have.
posted on our website. Okay? So you can continue to print those 